Oftentimes, what you see isn't always what you get. Some of the biggest bass we catch in the North Country are on small, undeveloped lakes. We call them pig ponds. They're generally very fertile bodies of water surrounded by farm country. These lakes don't look like much to the casual passerby, which is oftentimes why they are so good. They simply don't get the fishing pressure. Another area that often gets overlooked and produces big fish are the lakes in North and South Dakota's agricultural country. Same deal. Today on The Edge, Al Linder and Jeremy Smith set their sights on the big fish opportunities these agricultural lakes present. The kind of waters we've all probably driven past a hundred times or more. Watch as they uncover some truly spectacular multi-species action that rivals just about anything in the entire country. Along the way, the two are happy to reveal a host of presentations that will help you prepare for prairie fishing. This is hard bait country out here, baby. Closed captioning is provided by Smooth Moves, adjustable boat seat suspensions for a smoother ride. He's fishing out of the back of the boat. I haven't even put the boat in yet. There's carp all over here. I know, a big giant carp. Uh, this access is a little questionable. That's why we brought his Lund with a roller trailer on it. The trip we're on is kind of a bucket list oh. trip. Here's the deal. We've had a really late spring. We had to schedule for a couple months. And uh, this lake that, that we picked is really an interesting one. It's got good populations of smallmouth bass, as we understand, big white bass, big walleyes. There's even some muskies, calm down a little bit, some <laughs> muskies and a few big pike. And uh, we had looked at the weather and, and Jerry and I talked this morning. He said, do we go or do we not go? Why not go fishing? I mean, the weather's been, obviously we had a cold spring, but it's almost 90 degrees today. So everything has just been accelerated. The fish are shallow. And I think, you know, Alan, I don't know a lot about this particular lake. So we're going to put on some crankbait, some lipless, uh, lipless cranks, and we're just going to go start burning points at shoreline and see what this baby has to offer. I got a feeling we're going to catch fish with this weather. Systems coming in, we'll have some rain tomorrow, but these are good conditions for fish to bite. Everything's good except the stupid wind. 25 miles an hour, gust of 35. We're gonna be here for a day and a half. Join us on an exploratory trip. There's one. What do we got here? Oh, it was a big walleye. walleye. It was a big walleye. Darn. I didn't have my drag, so it was the first time I used this rod this year. Dummy. Big walleye. That was a big yeah, walleye. I seen, I seen the fish. It's interesting, I've got a side imaging transducer on my bow mount trolling motor before, and I don't know why I'd never done this in years past. It's the first year I've rigged it, but we're just going at a nice pace right now down this shoreline so I can actually see any rocks. And I was just telling Al, hey, it's been all flat sand, mud, and then boom, we just got into an area where there's a little more substrate that I could see. So having that trans, you know, that transducer side imaging on the bow is a really useful tool and we're moving at the same speed I'd side image with the big motor so anybody that's got a bow mount trolling motor and wants to put a side imaging inducer on I'd say it can be a really useful tool oh, oh right it. by the boat right by the boat here nice big oh, one too. big gal big gal this segment has been brought to you by Donlinger Automotive and they want to encourage you to drive safe on the road and on the water at Mercury, we invested thousands of hours of engineering manpower so you can enjoy hours and hours of untapped horsepower. Introducing the all-new V6 Mercury Pro XS. Light, quick, efficient. Mercury, go boldly. So the Megadon Imaging Transducer is built right into the motor. Everything is protected. Crystal clear imaging. Amazing. What do you guys want to call it? Anyone. Bill? Tim? Megan? Don? Imaging? Down imaging. Built in Mega Down Imaging. Megify your next Minn Kota motor with a Humminbird Down Imaging Transducer and get the clearest images from the best motors on the water. True to Lund's tradition of quality, craftsmanship, and innovation, Lund is reintroducing the 1650 Rebel XL at a special price. With the rugged stability of Lund's double plated IPS hull and features like an aerated live well rod lockers, Lund's Sport Track mounting system, and even includes a travel cover. The Lund 1650 Rebel XL, 
exceptional quality at an incredible price. To find your nearest dealer or to get a free catalog, visit Lundboats.com. The best performing electric fillet knife for both fresh and saltwater anglers. With our trusted non-slip grip, the Bubba Electric Fillet Knife provides the precision, control, and flex to fillet any size fish. They sleep over there. Head this way to the job site. And the big ones take their lunch break right about now. The Solix Series, with our most powerful innovations from Mega Imaging Plus to Cross Touch to Auto Chart Live on our largest screen ever. Fish might call it an invasion of privacy. You'll call it a busy day for your live well. Only from Humminbird. This segment is brought to you by Big Bite Baits, designed to bring the big bite to your line. Oh, cool. Oh, man. Just an odd spot, but this is where they're at, isn't it? So, oh, there's a big one underneath it, too. Is there really? A big one witter, yeah, big one witter. You, you got hair? Uh, uh, you, you got that hair, Jed? Yeah, throw it. I, I, I got to sit, sit and see if you can double up on her. She was down right, oh, she's still down there. She's still deep underneath her. No dice. No dice. She was there, uh, there, there for a while. So oftentimes you can do that. You, you know, boy, there's a big, she's a it. big one, man. Whoo! Oh boy, oh boy. Weird. How's that for a smallie, huh? I went to my all-time favorite smallmouth bait. <laughs> Orange X wrap. You can't beat that. Look at the belly on that fish. Huh? That was a pretty good little area here, Jerry. Yeah. Jerry had a couple a walleyes. We got some brown bass in here. Yeah, let me take a minute and kind of give you an update of what we've experienced or seen on these kind of prairie lakes. We fished them quite a while, quite a bit of a time over the years. And they're really different than a lot of natural lakes or reservoirs. There's a lot of water that actually looks pretty much featureless. Yeah, you know, and some of the things that these fish draw to, you find rocks and rocks are not real common. You find rocks, they're there naturally. If you find current, uh, they're there. These fish in these prairie lakes love wind. They love it. They're used to when big winds all the time blow out here so, and they program themselves to feed on the wind sides. That's what turns them on. Uh, you get mud lines, the walleyes, the bass, the northern white bass, they get into the mud lines because of the wind and they can get extremely shallow in these lakes all year long. You can have a really good bite right up in water a foot and a half deep and be catching big walleyes or, or, or big smallmouth. They like shallow water. So, yeah, you know, it's just a little different feel on, on, on these lakes uh, uh, than you see on normal, what I would call, structure lakes. And the other thing that, that they like, they like moving baits a lot. You gotta cover a lot of water. Why do they like moving baits? These fish move a lot because there's not a lot of spots to hold them. So they tend to move and you get in an area and you get a bunch of fish in an area. And uh, that could be walleyes, it could be smallmouth, it could be white bass, northerns. Just something to think about when you come to these lakes because there's a lot of water that looks good and it isn't holding anything. Many of the lakes in the Dakotas are unique unto themselves. Over the years, we've spent lots of trips out in these two states chasing smallmouth, walleye, largemouth, muskie, and everything in between. One thing I have to say about many of these lakes is they're extremely fertile and can have a tendency to grow a lot of fish very fast. The water table in many of these systems can fluctuate drastically also. We all remember what happened at Devil's Lake. And on an interesting side note, over the recent years, there has been some land disputes, or <laughs> water disputes, depending on how you look at it. Many landowners in these territories had property that was purchased years ago, possibly farmed for crops or grazing land. And over the last 25 years or so, the water levels rose, and many of these lowland areas that were previously farmland are now lakes. 
lot of different species of fish got into these bodies of water and they grew like wildfire. Many anglers got wind of it and followed the bite. Well, some landowners are disputing the fact that these lakes have accesses and can be fished by anglers. It's an interesting dilemma that the states have to work out. But one thing is for certain, many lakes in North and South Dakota are overlooked fish factories. That's pretty cool. See that on the side imaging? Oh, there's a little rock down here. Look at there's fish. I think it's a brown bass, if I'm gonna guess. I think it's Whoa. pulling too hard. It is, it's a nice Big brownie. brownie. Yeah, it's gonna spot lock us here. Al, the bow's gonna turn. Yeah. How oh, do you like that? Nice How do you like that? It's amazing when you come to a new body of water. There's a few baits you can throw, and a couple things to keep in mind to find good locations to catch fish. And that's what Al and I are talking about today. Looking at new water covering ground and catching and how to catch some really, really nice fish. How's that? First fish of the trip. You know, we come on these banks like this, that wind's been blowing in here and it muds this stuff up really good. Yeah, you can see, look how these, these hill areas, these get washed out all the time and they get muddy and it, and it draws bait and it draws these fish right in here. It's really an interesting thing yet, you know, another, we're catching some really nice smallmouth bass. And over the years, these prairie lakes uh, out west of the Mississippi River in a lot of the prairie land states, they got smallmouth in them and the smallmouth took off unbelievable, way better than anybody ever dreamed of. I, I mean, there's some really phenomenal fishing west of the Mississippi River in lakes that like, like we're on now that you would have never imagined smallmouth to be in 20, 25 years ago. Look at this, look at look the background behind me. Is that what you read about and seen in, in your whole life when people talked about catching smallmouth bass, stuff that looks like this? No, yeah, yet these lakes, the, the fish have adapted extremely, extremely well. Amazing story. Oh, got him, got, got him. him. Oh, nice one, yeah. cool. Yeah, that one Pretty I sweet. got. Bubba has designed a fillet knife for both fresh and saltwater anglers. With our trusted non-slip grip, the Bubba fillet knives provide the precision, control, and flex to fillet any size fish. your engine runs smoother and lasts longer with Seafoam Motor Treatment. Seafoam works to clean, lubricate, and protect your entire fuel system. Seafoam is safe and easy to use. Just pour it in. Seafoam in your fuel tank helps to clean harmful residues from fuel injectors, intake valves, and chamber areas. Then works to lubricate upper cylinders to help reduce long-term engine wear. Make the proven choice. Seafoam is available everywhere automotive products are sold. At Mercury, we ran our latest engine the equivalent of four times around the Earth at wide open throttle, so you can run around wide open too. Introducing the all new Mercury V6 four strokes. Light, quick, efficient. Mercury, go boldly. The Edge is presented by these and other fine sponsors. That felt pretty good. I bet it did. Yeah. See way up there? 
way up there. Yeah. Uh, fighting 25, 30 mile an hour winds, 30 mile an hour winds is not a lot of fun, except when you're catching those. Then that makes up for it. Yeah, that makes up for it, Jerry, a lot. Oh, I, oh, I got one too. You got one too? Yep. Little pocket of them up there. <laughs> Whoa. Al's is much larger than mine. Uh, come here. Oh. Hello, smallmouth. Huh? Oh. Look how fat this little Toby is. <laughs> Look at that. That is a pig. Woo. This is, you know, so we're getting, we're getting a few jerk and a few, or we're a little bit of everything. Yeah, I came on that shad dancer. Good walleye, smallmouth, white bass bait. Woo, brownie. Yeah, this one here, yeah, you know, this is that new, the new rip stop. This is the size 12. You know, the first introduction was a nine. This is the big 12. Double. Oh, you I got, got another, another one? one? Oh, he came off. Oh, uh, well, let me just see if I can get one in there. Oh, there you go. They're just piled up in there, huh? They don't feel like a big one. Oh, but it's a nice one. It's a nice one. one, but not a big one. I forgot, what, I forgot what it felt like, Jer. Whoa. It's a, it grew up. <laughs> it's coming at you. It grew up. Okay. Okay, rip, rip stop. Ooh. In their usual, usual mode, smallmouth hitting. Big smallmouth biting on jerk baits. Huh. <laughs> All, right. All right. That fish, these fish, are, the brownies are up there, Jared. They're up. Oh, yeah. This is a big gal. This is a big gal. Well, one thing is for sure. That's a nice fish. That's a good fish. Yeah, we get I, you players here. I'm moving around here hitting that. Yeah, thank you, sir. Okay, you got it on your tongue. Yeah, huh? Whew, nice fish. I'm, I'm beginning to like the <laughs> ripstop. That is a nice <laughs> brownie. I'm gonna try to double up here, see if I can get, get another one too, but man, that is a nice fish. Well, that was a good one, look at that, huh? Woo! Love it. There we go. Got him? Got him. Walleye. Is it? There's our walleye. Oh, oh nice I knew one was too. Here. Sweet. Our multi-species <laughs> action is coming together. I love it. Man. You know, one, one thing about what Al and I are doing right now is just, you know, casting and winding, covering water. With crankbaits, one thing I'll say that's really important when you're fishing treble hooks is a soft rod. You'll notice I'm fishing with a, a Legend Glass here, which is designed for throwing crankbaits. The other one I'll show you for my little, my little shad wrap rod is also a really moderate action, and that's the key to get those babies to hold on. Do you think he likes a rip and wrap? Huh? Can't even see it, man. Look at that. The smallmouth are in a little bit of everything, but when you got to catch them walleyes, there's nothing like that rip and wrap, man. I mean, that's an amazing, amazing bait for him. Fishes, fishes out. There we go, first South Dakota walleye. My first walleye of the season and I am loving it. Fish has definitely spawned out. So yeah. these windblown points are just great places to look for these guys. I'm gonna get it back. Goodbye walleye. So as I mentioned, what I'm throwing the lipless crankbait rod on is a rod that's actually designed for throwing lipless cranks. This is a 7.2 medium power moderate action so the moderate action means there's a lot of flex in the rod and i've got this on a daiwa tutula sv this is the super free versatile spool you can cast we're fishing windy conditions man you can throw this thing in the wind and you never backlash it's just an amazing tool but the other one that is a really great rod set up for anybody that loves throwing shad wraps one of the great all-time baits is this is the Legend Tournament Walleye Rod. It's a seven foot medium moderate. It's the same idea. It's a really soft parabolic rod. So when you get those little tiny hooks, this rod can really flex. You can see that and it just keeps the fish pinned extremely well. So when you're casting and winding little crankbaits, it's a good idea to have soft sticks. Well, for putting on a three and a half hour session, we got a lot of information for tomorrow's outing. One, 
We know that the fish are shallower than 10 foot, and any cover, like rocks, are key locations. Two, the same fish are moving, so that means horizontal lures are primary. Water temperature is a huge driving factor to the fish location. In the absence of cover, find warm water. Four, windswept shorelines are definitely key starting points. And that brings me to a very, very important point. One thing that is imperative for any quality fishing experience is a good troll motor. We stand by the motto that if you're going to buy one, get the most powerful and advanced troll motor you can get for your rig. In other words, don't sell yourself short. The Minn Kota Ultrax is truly one of the most revolutionary pieces of fishing equipment that's come along in years. It's a hybrid of cable drive and power assist and shares all of the features of the iPilot and iPilot Link. It's truly the best of both worlds. The autopilot feature on this troll motor is invaluable for fishing in windy situations. You simply set a direction and speed and you can keep both feet planted on the deck which is awesome when you're fighting wind and waves. This is something you never could have done with a cable drive in the past. You know, good fish. You, you know, the beauty of this is you don't know what you're going to catch. One time you, you set the hook, it's a walleye. The next time it's a big brown bass. And occasionally you do what Jeremy did and you get a muskie. <laughs> Got him. Walleye. Oh. Many things have been said about rough waters, but few things have been said about a smooth ride. The revolutionary Smooth Moves Ultra is a mechanical suspension system that features a four spring design and a hydraulic shock, providing the most comfortable and durable ride on the market. Through passion, tenacity, and the right equipment, you can overcome even the roughest waters. Hey, you just got to visit Sunset Country. You want more Angling Edge? Well, our Facebook, YouTube, and website are constantly being updated. It's like overtime of your favorite show. Check out the store with the brand new apparel. And purchase five DVDs at the incredibly low price of $25. That's five DVDs for just 25 bucks. Place an order at anglingedge.com. Time to hit the lake because it's ice fishing season and Fleet Farm has everything you need from novice to expert to help you reel in the record catch. Because right now it's 14 inches thick, no sweat season. Flag up season, improve your odds season. Now that's a trophy season. And of course, catch your limit and eat it to season. Fleet Farm is built for every season. Fleet Farm, built for real life. The Edge is presented by these and other fine sponsors. That rip and wrap, I mean, we're throwing a bunch of baits. The shad dancer's been good. We've caught fish on the on the hair jig, of course. Catch some fish on the GT360, but for me, day in, day out, if I gotta cover water and look for fish, my number one search tool, because of its versatility, has got to be the rip and wrap. There's a lot of great rattle baits on the market, but this particular bait works so good. You can fish it shallow, you can fish it deep, you can fish it like a jig if you need to. It's just an incredibly versatile tool and they catch everything. They're just incredible. So big, big brown bass. Bunch of them down there. Bunch of them. Whole pile of them. Yes, yes. Keep, uh, keep them in there. Keep them in there. Oh, this is a tank. Wow. <laughs> Spring whitewater. I thought I got bumped and then it was like boom, boom. Boom. And then I saw him. He came up. I just popped it right by the boat and bam. 
There's a couple other ones with them. Boy, these are fat fish. I mean, just incredibly chunky, chunky bass. They are, whoa. Come here, Mr. Brown Bass, huh? What do you think of that? Boy, these are really, really nice critters. I tell you what, if you want to have a good time catching lots of fish in a fun way, casting and winding hard baits. This is hard bait country out here, baby. Come out, explore some new water in the prairie country, and catch lots of these and multi-species to boot. What a great critter, huh? You know, because of the way I closed this show and had from the beginning of Angling Edge and Fishing Edge going on the air with a little in inspirational close, people send me a lot of different books to read, and I love it. I love it. You got some, send them to me. I'll read them. Here's two that I really, really enjoyed. You can see I got them tabbed pretty good. Devotions from the Heartland 1, Devotions from the Heartland 2. This is real life stories from real people like you and I that live in a world, construction workers, uh, 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 doctors, painters, fishermen, uh, 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 you name it, any different kind of career. And these people have shared an individual thing that has happened in their life based on God's word that has had a major impact on them. And it all goes back to the Bible. Now this is interesting to me. So many people think that the Word of God, and I believe the Bible is the inspired Word of God, is only for people in the full-time ministry. I mean, you gotta be in a full-time ministry to really be into the Bible and know what, it, know what it's all about and, and, and to share the truth, and that is true, true. But you know what? This book isn't only for people in a full-time ministry. This book is for everyday people, just like you and I. It's God talking to you. You get into it, you will hear from him. That's how he communicates in so many ways with us. These testimonies are phenomenal. And I love testimonies because it's real people with real life experiences talking about the power of God's word and how it changed their life. If you've never been in this book, I want to encourage you. Go to the New Testament, read the New Testament, read Proverbs, read Psalms, uh, uh, forget the Old Testament to start. That's a different covenant. We live under what is termed the New Testament. This is the laws of God that we live under. And uh, uh, it's all good. You'll, ha uh, you'll understand how God thinks. You'll understand why these miracles have happened to everyday people that are walking the street, that you're seeing in the malls, that you're seeing in the food stores. They're sharing their testimonies on how this book has changed their life. And it'll do the same thing for you if you look at it with an open mind and start to seek the truth. I promise you it will. Hey, from all of us here at The Edge, have a good fishing season. We'll see you on the water. Hey, I want to take a moment to thank you for watching. And if you really like what you see, we got a whole lot more. So check us out at any one of these online outlets.